Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. Vancouver Carpenter hat edition, also known as needs a haircut Vancouver Carpenter. Um, yeah, so a lot of you guys found the video I did on the DAP Eclipse patch to be pretty unscientific. Don't make me flex my Harvard School of Drywall degree on you guys. <laughs> no, seriously, you guys. Like, you're expecting scientific from a drywaller? Have you ever heard the saying, if you don't finish high school, you can always finish drywall? Okay, all right. Um, I bought the bigger one this time, and this one is for a six inch patch for up to three inch hole. So I think the T-bone is gonna do a better job smashing a hole this time. So let's see what we can do. Okay. Dang it, that was too big. Oh well. Now I gotta repair this part first. <laughs> or I could just make another hole. <laughs> Let's do that. I'll try and be a little more careful with this part. That's better. It's still not three inches though. There we go, that's a three inch hole. Just like in the last video, I am gonna take out some of this loose stuff so that we can re be really clear about just exactly how big the hole in this drywall actually is. And yeah, none of this is bigger than three inches. I really don't think I need my tape measure to figure that out. I can just tell. We'll get, our, get ourselves a clean, dry surface. And I even put two coats of primer on here first so that we don't have that absorption issue. So I do read the comments and there was a ton of people saying that the reason this didn't work was because it was on unprimed drywall and when you paint unprimed drywall, you don't get as much of a buildup. And the reason we want to build up is because it, there's supposed to be a buildup. So when we pull this little tab off, that it winds up flush, thereby making it impossible to see the silly flower patch. Um, I still think you're going to be able to see it no matter what, but I just, you know what, I wanna do due process and do a better job in this video. And I'm also not gonna use a heat gun. I will let it dry on its own schedule and just go back inside and do other stuff while we're doing this or while this is drying. Anyways, let's get this out. I do still remember it well enough to not have to go back to the instructions. And if you're watching this video, you probably watched the other one. But yeah, so the first thing we gotta do is remove this. There we go. Let's get a closer look at this. This is interesting. So as we can see, this circle is a little bit bigger than this hole. And you can feel, when you feel this thing, it's the firmest right here. This part is a little bit firmer than the surrounding parts. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe we, we can get some flower power going on here with this patch. Let's do it so you guys can see the writing. Okay, nice and centered, nice and centered. Let's get it all nice and stuck. Adhesion was definitely not one of the problems with this. So that's nice and stuck. Now, what do you say we go the extra mile and do a heaping generous coat of actual primer? If I can get this roller to start rolling again. There we go, there's just too much paint. But yeah, a lot of people said the reason this didn't work is because there wasn't enough buildup. So here's one thing to consider. If you're putting so much buildup over this that you actually have like that film thickness, it's really hard to blend the rest of your paint into the wall. So even if this somehow hides the flower power, you're going to see this splotchy area of paint on the wall if you don't blend that properly. But this is a much thicker coat I've just put on here. I'm now gonna do my best to try and blend these edges. All right, that's a nice thick coat. So just so nobody can say I didn't put a thick enough coat on here. That's a thick enough coat. And I used actual primer sealer here. So this isn't just cheap uh, drywall primer. This is like, you know, one, two, three bullseye primer, right? This is that 
strong smelling ammonia -ish stuff that really seals everything in for better or worse. So now I'm gonna let this actually dry for a while and then we'll come back to it. Okay, you guys, it has definitely been long enough. Been well over an hour with a fan on it and it's really hot out, so it's definitely good. Right on the can of bin primer sealer, it says that you can top coat within one hour. So let's do just that. I'm just gonna resaturate this roller here real quick. Yeah, it's still great. Okay, let's pull this off now, you guys. That came off way better than the last time. And, okay, so, I mean, people were saying that it needs to be built up. The paint around it needs to be built up, but like, you can't build up paint that thick. This isn't gonna work, you guys. But hey, let's stop being so quick to judge and just do everything per the manufacturer's instructions and see how it comes out. And let's actually make sure that this is a pretty nice thick coat of paint. Mm, I think we could do a little bit thicker than that. I mean, we, if we remember correctly, it took like three coats of paint to hide this. All right, that's just gonna have to be good enough. Let's get a close look. So right here, a tiny bit of paint actually got under those edges. So it's not sitting as flat as I wanted it to. Definitely, it's, it's better. Like, this edge though is still really thick. Kind of depends where the light's shining from, but I'd say it's marginally better. Okay, you guys, so it has been hours. It's very clear that one coat won't cover this. You just don't get the coverage. And if we look up close, we definitely still have some flower power going on. I mean, it's better, like, for sure. But you guys, I really just don't think there's any chance of actually getting that edge to hide. Like, we are gonna need a lot of coats of paint to hide that. Uh, maybe if I get enough crumbs in my paint, like I have right here, <laughs> maybe that'll distract us from that edge. When it's wet, it almost looks like it has a chance of hiding, but once it dries out, that edge starts to peek out pretty good. I don't know why I'm fussing so much about the little specks in the paint, it's just habit, whereas it totally doesn't matter here. So again, this is a pretty thick coat of paint I've got on here, and I'll show you guys what I mean about how it looks like it almost has a chance of disappearing. So here it is with the light turned off. And at first glance, you think, actually, this kind of stands a chance of actually disappearing. You can only faintly make it out. But let's get the old ring light shining across it and see what we're really going to see. Once we do that, it's really clear that there's just a big, bulgy, blistery thing. I mean, it's still like, it's better than the last one because of that heavy buildup I did on the first coat before pulling the tab, but like, I mean, it's just a giant blister that can't be punctured by a doorknob again. So we'll let this dry again overnight. I mean, right now, like it really does look deceptively good when the paint is wet, but I'm super interested to see it tomorrow. Like I'm not rushing this one at all. Man, it really looks deceptively good without too much critical lighting. Like, yeah, it could pass if nobody knew where to look for it. Well, this is at a chance to dry overnight. Let's take a discerning look at it. So as we can see, the coverage just isn't that good, but the flower power is still there and strong. This isn't even like critical lighting. So yeah, I mean, it's still, not even close to passable. Although, like a lot of people mentioned in the comments, this is still better than a lot of the patches that most of us that have been in the business have seen. 
like you can't get away from the fact that this is just a sticker that we're painting over. Uh, it's going to take a lot of coats of paint to make this disappear. But the part that stops this from ever being even remotely acceptable to me is the bulge. Like, I didn't use a heat gun, I didn't do anything, that's just how this works. So I know I got a lot of flack in the last video of people saying that I warped it by using a heat gun. Did nothing of the sort this time, and it's still a hokey bulge. We could blend in that flower power, but you could never make that bulge go away. Okay, so even though I think this is a fool's errand, why don't we throw a little mud on this thing and see what happens? I did promise I would do that, and that was one of the most commonly asked questions in the comments. But I would think that anybody that knows a little bit about drywall, that knows what happens when you have a blister, especially a you know, two and a half inch to three inch wide blister knows what's gonna happen when we do this. All right, now let's say for some reason this was acceptable to you and you just wanted to get rid of the flower power. So what you would want to do is just try and blend this edge and keep the mud off this part. And it would be better to use something like dry decks, right? Like a thicker type of spackle for that. But that's not what I have, so that's not what I'm doing. Anyways, we can see that anything over here is probably gonna crack. But that's what I would do, and I would just sand this down and try and blend that little flower power edge. But that wouldn't be very fun, would it? Let's see what happens if we actually coat this thing. We'll leave it overnight. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad and it's everything I expected it would be. <laughs> All right, I'm looking forward to sanding this tomorrow. Oh, hang on, let's make it a little better. There we go, there we go. All right, you guys, it's been a few days. I'm kind of done with this, to be honest. I already feel vindicated, but let's see what happens when we mud over it. Um, I think I'm going to bring the light over here and get the camera guy to zoom right in so you can really see it. Oh, not to mention mid-video haircut plus camera guy instead of tripod action going on. Must be all disoriented now. Okay, so we can see it right here. There's the patch. What happens if we tap it? Actually, I was expecting it was just going to flake off and all crack off. I guess there's a little bit of flexibility in that mud. That wasn't that bad. Let's sand it. Okay, it doesn't want to sand right there because like of the way it flexes in all the time. Oh man, the worst part is now we're going to have to paint it again because of course if I just end the video everyone will be like, well what happens if you paint it after you sand it? I guess let's find out. I mean, we can see what it looks like right now. Alright, there's probably enough paint on this roller to just mash it out. Looks great. Looks like a circle on the wall that's slightly smoother because we can't see the flower power. I mean, do we honestly need to wait for this to dry? Let's take okay, you guys. Um, I mean, let's just get this over with, okay? This has been such a pain doing this video twice. Is this acceptable to you? Right? We've, we've seen how it looks under manufacturer's instructions. Perfectly followed. In fact, even a little bit overdone. Still not acceptable. We've seen what happens when we mud it. Flower power is gone, but definitely like this, you know, I mean, sure, okay. Behind a door in a crappy rental, yeah, that's fine. And the other thing that we've mentioned, maybe I've even said it, this is way better than a lot of people's attempts at patches. But let's be honest, like even if they tried to follow all these extra instructions and do this, if they couldn't figure out a regular drywall patch, 
they're gonna mess this up too. So this isn't gonna save anybody who's horrible unless you just do it like the bare basic. Um, follow the instructions exactly. Put maybe one or two extra coats of paint. Then it could be like borderline almost 10% of acceptable. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, let's check it out under the skylight now. Like really, you know, in some horrible lighting. Yeah, like, no man, it's not gonna cut it. Although I'm surprised the mud's not cracking more when I do this. That's the part that's really surprising me. I thought that mud that was over here was just gonna like totally crack. It's denting right now from my fingernail, but it's not that bad. Okay, whatever. We gotta be done this video. It's gotta be done. <laughs> Guys, I'm gonna end it. Thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Now we can really suss out the super sus uh, Eclipse DAP drywall patch. I'm done. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope your project's going awesome, but I hope you're doing even better. Thanks for watching. Till the next one.